Life in a world that keeps changing Think that it's progress you're making Copy and paste pretty faces All the time Pictures so perfect we play Hello everyone, welcome to Anointed Lady TV, the home of news and politics. If it is your first time in this channel, you are highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you like what we do on this channel, hit on the subscribe button. Also put on the notification bell so you'll be notified by YouTube anytime we drop a new video. And if you are returning subscribers, thank you very much for always coming back to watch our videos. On this platform, we drop videos every day and we react to every video that come our way. And on this very video, I will be watching with you. And after watching, let's go to the comment section and drop our opinion constructively. Like our videos and also share our videos if possible. See you next time in my next video. <coughs> Yesterday, I told you I had called, so I had so told that I couldn't appear yesterday. Oh, sorry. so sorry. So sorry. Our people are compelled. You, you feel better now? You want to have some water? The f petroleum, I'm, I'm, I think I'm getting better. I'm, okay. I can go ahead. Okay. Because we could take Our some time for you to get better. Yeah. Because we could no actually give you some time. Better, I think, okay. by the solution of God. Let me bring my point. Yeah. I said our people are agrarian. They are engaged in cultivating garlic and onion and other perishable items as such as they use local wells and local boreholes which they use generator set to power to irrigate their farms. At this very particular moment, most of them are available at very exorbitant price. They cannot even get it. They have to travel many kilometers, 30, 40 kilometers to go and buy a liter or two to come back to their farms because there's no availability of fuel within the area. So in this circumstance, you can't imagine whatever price somebody is asked to because somebody has invested all he had, his energy and his means in the farm. And it is about to harvest. And he has to continue to power it for the next two, three weeks. No matter the cost, he has to buy. Equally, the same thing happens to the motorists both the okay. commuters and the transport owners okay okay and even the elites like you and i okay who are, let me please please sir let me please please sir so in this circumstance here we have a situation which has become an incredible problem over the period of time for about four decades so if the solution is only to remove the subsidy this subsidy the issue has been said many people have said many inquiries committee have been set up by the national assembly and the executive as well, that some people are feeding fat on it. Okay. I would love to see when those people that have fed fat on it are brought to book, okay. investigated properly, prosecuted, and jailed if possible. Okay. So, uh, uh, honor if honorable the new incoming government comes, okay, honorable it will Sakin, table I have to the come issue here. before the National Assembly and before the public. Okay, honorable it's not Sakin. that you just make a pronouncement. Or make a pronouncement will not solve honorable the situation. Sakin, will not solve the problem. What you are looking at, what will, what will solve honorable the Sakin, problem Sakin, have permanently to come in at ease for the, for the city of this country. Okay, honorable Thank Sakin, Hadi, I have to come in here. So you made a couple of uh, mistakes and let's set the record straight. Obi as a question, did not participate. In fact, you owe her an apology in that subsidy protest because she was VP at World Bank then. And her face was not seen in that process. That I remember that protest very well. So you owe her an apology for mentioning her name. Most of the people that subsided the sub, uh, that kicked against the subsidy remover there were people in your party. Largely people as pushed by what was APC, uh, the likes of uh, Save Nigeria Group, Mr. Tunde Bakari, Pastor Tunde Bakari, and a couple of other people. So it was largely supported by people in the APC then. In fact, that was the first assault against President Goodluck Jonathan's government then. So, but you owe all, Madame Obi as a question and apology because she was not around in the country then. That's number one. Number two, I'd like to ask you, yes, you deal in upstream and all of that. You talk- I will do that statement. Okay, good. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you so much for withdrawing the statement. So you're dealing upstream and all of this. But I would like to ask you further, because now we are hearing contending voices. A couple of months ago, the NMPC said, if we remove subsidy, it will be at a certain amount, less than 500 naira, that the true amount will be. 
Now, a coalition of stakeholders in the private sector are talking about 750. The question will be, how can we meet each other halfway in such a way that we can start to think of the palliatives and remove subsidy rather than kicking it down the road? I would like to refresh your memory. We've had the problem of subsidy since 1973 when we had the Yom Kippur War. As at 85, 86, 87, 88, there was a recurring talk about subsidy removal. So it's not a problem that is on ground now. But we keep kicking it down the road. And that's why a lot of people say, what changed in your arguments with the APC in 2012? Because a lot of economic watchers argue that 2012 will have been the best time as regards empirical economic conditions to be able to pull out the subsidy then. Because the price increase we're running away from then, we still finally faced it in terms of increase. So what will be the way forward on this so that we don't kick the count down the road again? Because everybody is kicking already. The labor unions are saying if they pull it out without fixing refinery, we will fight. What is the way forward? Okay. Let me answer you this way. When I was trying to buttress my points, you cut me short. Now I have an opportunity to complete what I started saying. You wouldn't have even asked this question. And when you interjected, interjected me and corrected me that, of course, Lizzie was then not in Nigeria. She was on the World Bank. I withdraw that statement. It was a crowd. So when I saw somebody appear like her, I thought she was the one. In any case, I was drawn it. Whatever it is, it was a combination of concerned Nigerians and high-profile people. You mentioned one, Tunde Bakari, who was one time a presidential, uh, vice presidential uh, candidate and a very respected pastor in the church. So if people like him could be in that protest, I believe it must be genuine, sincere, and should be applauded, and it may be respected. He is in the same category of people that are respected together with Equus uh, Lazy and many others, including your humble self. The issue of subsidy is not something that you will just walk off one day. We are not in a military era. We are in a democratic system and a democratic uh, regime, whereby everything would be processed within the rules and within the extant laws. I even expected the current government of President Muhammad Buhari to be patriotic enough to remove the oil subsidy before it finishes its next 61 days. That will help greatly. Whoever is trying to politicize the issue of oil subsidy or waiting to ambush President-elect Bolaime Tinubu when he comes, he is just wasting his time. Don't waste your time, please. Let's talk of things that will unite this country Let's talk on issues that will remove this country fast. This man came with a vision. He came with consolidated plans that will develop this country. Not issues that will divide us. Foreign subsidy is one over many problems that we are having and he's going to inherit. I have very good confidence in him and people around him. That thing will be solved in a manner that is desired and the desired result will be achieved. On the issue of parity of prices, these are opinions given by the operators, the NNPC, who bought in oil or fuel and sells to the marketers. And the marketers and other stakeholders are saying their price should be higher than what the NNPC is proposing. The NNPC might be proposing this based on they know how much they bought it from there and how it arrives there then they are thinking when they give it out to them plus minus they again profit margin it should not be more than 500 naira so if those people say no it has to be about 700 naira then we have to look at it critically are they trying to profit uh, profit racketeering even before it arrives the answer should be no everybody should be patriotic and everybody should be honest and sympathize with Nigerians. And the whole issue is not a is not matter of 700 Naira. It's the devaluation of Naira that we're having. 
I was in Morocco a couple of weeks ago. They are selling fuel for about one and a half dollar. One and a half dollar at equivalent rate of Nigerian Naira, that is about 1,000 plus. Oh, no, because at 740 Naira per dollar in the black market, which we buy, oh, no, and another 360 Naira is about 1,111 Naira. Oh, no, so at 500 Naira, I think, well, let me, sorry, sir, let me please, please. We're at trying to manage Naira, time. If we could I just, feel, if we could I just feel, summarize. I will feel, I will feel, whatever we are trying to manage, let me clarify. We are trying to educate Nigerians to understand what is coming for them. We are part of them. I feel bad the people in my locality are buying fuel at 500 or above Naira because when they come to sell their onion to you, if they say a measure of onion, which is now selling for about 500 Naira, if they say they will sell it 100, 1,000 Naira, you will uh, protest. And if you don't buy it, it's something perishable. Within three days, they get lo it gets lost. And they are in the loss. And they'll be out of business. Then, uh, God forbid, most of their youth will migrate to the cities doing perennial jobs and menial businesses, which I don't want to happen. So, by the time the new government come in, like I've said, I, have, uh, I wish the sitting government would remove the old city before it goes. That will be the parting gift it could do to Nigerians and to the incoming government. Okay. And as I said, when they come, it's a tripartite issue. The government will sit down, I believe, with Nigerian stakeholders in the market, the NNPC, everybody, and say, what is the way forward? What is the solution? They will bring recommendations. All these recommendations that are being proposed now will be tabled to them, and they'll look at it critically. They are people of integrity, and they are people who have the a concern of the masses at their heart, and I'm sure they have also experts within their fold Honorable who Sakinada. Come and advise in the right direction Honorable and do it the right way. We have a responsibility to structure yes, conversations sir. on this program. So when we tell you, please wrap wrap up, you should do so. Please, it's very important. That's the uh, quote. Ayo Payo Show was here. I saw how he did. Yes. He didn't stop him. Okay, just Is wait. Is it because I am Musa? Uh, no. Ayo Payo Show was here. I saw him. Uh, uh, no, no, please, please. Go ahead. Once you are in okay. the public space, you, you have the garbage. Just Go follow. Ahead. Just follow the rules. <laughs> I was going to ask you. I, One, it's no I longer. I lawmaker. I follow the rules. It's no longer fashionable to blame previous governments. Nigerians elect new governments so that they can solve problems. And I hope when the Tinubu administration takes over, that rhetoric coming from your party will not continue because it will be interesting to see you say, oh, previous governments did not do it. Would that include the, the APC government? That's one. Two, for, for, I assure you, no, it please, will not happen. Please hold on. For, it will not. For Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu, removal of subsidy is even a campaign promise. He said, subsidy for subsidy is pro poor. And that is one of the things he will, he will do. He will remove for subsidy, and he will also check uh, estimated billing of electricity consumption. But let's go back to uh, your constituency, Gorun Yogada uh, federal constituency. I have not followed the politics there very uh, closely. But our market, are you going back to the House of Reps, or you know there are uncertainties about your own plan to return to the House of Reps? Briefly, so that we can go. Before I came in here, one of our producers asked me to come and discuss the issue of the forthcoming run election. I told him I'm a party to it. I don't want to preempt the process, so I am not eligible to discuss it. If I do that, I think it's not fair. Please kindly allow me not to talk on that issue. But what's the state of play? What's the state of play for the whole national moment. assembly? What's the state of play at the moment? What is what? what? What is the situation now with the election? All National Assembly elections, all, na all National Assembly elections in Sokoto State have been put on hold. It's inconclusive. I am not. I am not ready to discuss it here until after the outcome. Whatever it, it whatever way it goes, you can invite me, please. Okay. Thank you very.
day ladies and gentlemen good day my brothers and sisters my mommies and my dad is over there is your sister again your doctor your friend your girl anointed lady tv please if today is your first time of coming across my youtube channel please do subscribe for me subscribe and turn on the notification bell so each time i upload any video you will be notified so in this my channel i will be bringing up many things to you in which you will benefit from it i do talk show i do news anything you want to talk about i am into it please subscribe subscribe and turn on the notification bell so each time i upload any video or each time i'm on live on youtube you will be notified thank you very much for always being there for me please do subscribe for me and as you do so god will richly bless you and meet your heart desire thank you very much i love you all